city. You're new to working out and you want to know where do you start? Well, the best place to start is go to a gym. Okay? Doesn't matter what you do in the gym. Just go in the gym and look around. Okay? Now, for working out, and you want to work out with weights or whatever to, to, to do some good weight training, the best place to start is very light. Okay? You want to know your form in the exercise that you're doing. So if I were to say, okay, Derek, we're going to start with the lightest weight we've got. Okay? This is eight pounds. Okay, now I can take this eight pounds and turn it into four pounds. How do I turn it into four pounds? Here's four pounds in one hand, four pounds in the other hand. Isn't that, isn't that good? And now I can do this with four pounds in each arm, giving me a total of eight pounds. Okay, where do you start? You start right here. Okay? Yeah. Once you know, you say, hey, you know what? This is too easy. I want to go a little heavier. Well, okay, there we go. Yeah, try this. Hold that. Ready? And go up and down just like this, yeah. How does that feel? Great. Yeah? Yeah. And is it very hard? A or, little. Or, or very easy? Very easy. I think it's very easy, right? So I would say, okay, Derek, give me this. Hold this in one hand. Hold this in the other hand. And now do that with both. It's a little harder, isn't it? Yeah, but it feels good. And the more you do that, the more you're going to say, well, now that's too easy. Let me try a little bit more. So he'll go from four pounds to eight pounds. And then he'll look, what's a little more than eight pounds? Maybe 10 pounds. 10 pounds in each arm? That's 20 pounds. Holy. And then when you're doing cardio, where do you start when you do cardio exercise? When you're, say you're on the treadmill. I think, I don't know what to do, I'm new. You know what I would do? I would walk first on the treadmill. And then I would push the speed button, little by little. I don't fall. Run a little faster, a little faster, a little faster. Until I say, you know what, let me do this for a half hour and see how I feel. You don't have to do everything in one day. Do it for a half hour, next day you come in, see how you feel doing it again. And that's where you start. You always start easy and light, and you work your way a little, a little, a little heavier and faster. What's the difference between kettlebell and dumbbell? So, wow, that's a real hard one. The difference between a kettlebell and a dumbbell. Oh, oh here we go. Let's turn around over here. So, these things are kettlebells. And these things are dumbbells, okay? Yeah. The difference between both of them is, with the dumbbells, you can hold one in each hand and, and, and do any kind of exercise you want, basically, you know, with your arms, okay? Okay. With kettlebell, basically with the same weight, it's kind of hard to hold two of them and do what you need to do with the kettlebell, okay? Because a kettlebell, you learn to twist, raise, down, hold it with two hands, squat, come up, swing, hold on. You can't swing it up. You could try. It's very uncomfortable. So they made this sleek enough so you can actually swing it in between your legs and then switch hands. So the kettlebell has more motion with your body than a dumbbell. You're gonna hold the dumbbells, you're gonna stand still, and you're gonna do your exercises, and that's it. You see, so with kettlebell, you have more motion involved with your body. That was a really good question, Derek. Okay, so Derek, I'm gonna give you a kettlebell, and you, you're gonna open your legs, you're gonna hold the kettlebell with one hand, and I want you to swing it like an elephant's trunk, like this. Can you do that? Yeah. All right. Try doing that. Hold it. Ready? Bend down a little, and there you go. And swing it out. And swing.
sling it out. So you're working your shoulders, your arms, your hips, your knees. Everything is working now. Look at that. Yeah, very good. You're getting me tired. Whew. Oh, it also gets your heart rate up. So that is also doing cardio while you're doing weights at the same time. So you're getting rid of two things, right, at one time. Very good, Derek. That was awesome. So what's the difference between different types of weights that you find at the gym? So what's the difference between different type of weights that you would find in the gym? Okay, well, the dumbbells, which, you know, we kind of went over. It's something that you would pick a weight suitable for you. And with dumbbells, it's very interesting. You can do this with one hand. You can do this with the other hand. And then you can switch. Do this with one hand, control it, do this with the other hand. Or do both at the same time. Dumbbells, okay? Kettlebells, well, we know with kettlebell, the swinging action, the squatting, the raising, everything is getting your heart rate up, as well as moving more joints. When we do training, a lot of trainers do muscle training. A lot of trainers do joint training. Here's another way. Square the bar. You can't swing a bar like a kettlebell, can you? No, it's going to hurt somebody. Okay. However, you can hold the bar. The bar is made to hold with two hands. So you can execute all kinds of exercises. Like this. Want to try? Here, hold this down. Yeah. Ready? Hold it. It's heavy. Ready? And curl it. Up and down. Up. Down. Up and down. Good. Now, hold it the other way with your hands. Yeah, just like that. There you go. Ready? Now you're going to do this. Ready? Bring it here. Now bring it over your head. Now bring it down. And all the way down. Good. So that's basically how you would use a bar. But then it goes further. Because then we have a ball. This ball is 10 pounds. The bar is 10 pounds. The dumbbells I showed you is 10 pounds. And the kettlebell is 10 pounds. Well, what do you do with this? I want you to hold this high over your head. And now I want you to slam it down to the ground really hard. Yes! Okay, so you see what you just did? That's called explosive. Explosive energy. It's actually a good tool to get exercise, cardio, and get rid of a lot of stress. Okay, work gives us stress, classroom gives us stress. So what do you do? You. <laughs> But you're getting a workout with a smile on your face, right? That felt good, didn't it? <clears throat> so there are many tools that you can use. That was awesome. Yeah, that was awesome. So how do you find a good trainer? <clears throat> Carissa, how do you find a good trainer? You know what? There are a lot of good trainers out there. You may, you may, somebody may approach you at a gym, maybe a little bit overweight, but he's got good credentials behind it. You know, the guy's been training for 25 years. He's got client lists that he can give you. And the most important is that certificate that's accepted, you know, here in the United States as, as a real trainer. There, there are many types of trainer certification. <clears throat> the real type of trainer certification is the kind of certification that you have to study for either take at a university or college, and you got to go to a testing center. Unfortunately, we have trainer exams that they do online at home. You know, are they any good? I don't believe in that. I believe you have to be, you have to do your practicals. You have to know what you're doing. It's not something that you can go ahead and just take it home, open book, and just flimps through it. There are a lot of certifications out there. There's a company that you can check anybody's certification. It's called REPS, R-E-P-S, okay? <clears throat> it's on basically uh, exercise professionals. Uh, and you can type in their name and it'll come up with their certification or um, let me see your certification, get a hold of the company, see how legit that company is, Bam, you've got a good. Doesn't matter if the guy is 
big muscles, it doesn't matter if the guy is heavy or looks like he's out of shape. Um, you don't want to go with some, oh, he looks great, I want to be like him, I want to hire him. Chances are he has no certification. Okay? Chances are he took a fly-by-night certification, but he's a great-looking guy and he works out, what have you. Um, again, you've got to go by not, like they say, don't judge the book by its cover. Don't, you can't do that. I've seen a lot of people hurt, a lot of people going in the wrong direction doing that and not really getting the whole picture of what health and fitness is all about. You know, they're just getting the, okay, yeah, I'm working out. Oh, yeah, he's kicking my butt. Okay, yeah, I'm sweating with him. And so what? You know, you don't get what you really need to change your lifestyle. A good trainer will change your lifestyle. You know, will really make you understand and educate you to make his job easier. Why? Because you already know it. You know, in training, I was trained to educate my people. I don't keep any secrets. I give them my formulas, I do train them, I show them how I figure it out. They do it, great, you're just making my job easier. We go to the next step from there. And that's how you find a good trainer. You gotta do your, you can't just go in and, oh, I was sold on this trainer, he's good looking, don't worry, he's doing a great job. You don't know he's doing a great job. <laughs> you really have to dig into it a little bit before you make a decision like that. How many days a week should you work out and for how long? Good question. I recommend everybody to work out every day, seven days a week. Moderate to a little more intense workout. You know, um, doing the lawn, I mean, doing some lawn work is not working out. You know, unless you're mowing the lawn with a non-powered mower, that's a workout. However, no, uh, a nice moderate to vigorous workout minimum 30 minutes a day. You know, with that, you're sure keeping your blood profile in a very healthy, very healthy line. You know, and you're doing yourself justice. You know, they say that working out actually adds to your lifespan. Which is true, because our generation, generation before, which still do work out, you notice our lifespan, people are living to 90, 95. Hey, when I was a kid, my grandfather was 58, he was old, he was ready to die. That's the way it was back in the day. Now it's 85. They say, they hear 85, oh, poor lady, she was young. Yeah, that's what you hear nowadays. Do you have any classes for the special needs population? Oh, yeah. Uh, we have yoga. That's with Miss Cookie, not a cookie you eat. We we have karate, we have obstacle course, we have boxing, we have spinning, we have a weights in motion, we have swimming, we have weight training with Miss Risa, Coach Risa. Uh, we have, um, we do have some healthy cooking classes, which are not really fitness classes, but you need to know about how to eat right. Uh, we also have some development classes, which, you know, one day you're going to be working and supporting your mom, you know, and that's a good thing. So we do have a lot of classes and many more that, you know, we just don't have time to mention right now. Thank you, Isaac, for joining us today on Discovery with Dick and Chris. My pleasure. Thank you, guys, and join us next week on our next episode.